We're smiling? Yeah, we're smiling. <laughs> I don't smile, I'm like a smiling person. <laughs> yes, you are. In the last video, we showed you the tour of the van and talked generally about our plans for the van. Um, so now we're actually gonna get started on working on it, finally. And I feel like thoughts have changed a little bit. Initially, we were gonna do the engine swap as like the very first thing, I think. We thought about it and I have to learn how to drive this and there is a- Manual, there, yeah, switch yeah. the gears which I don't know anything about. Everyone in the comments was like, please film you learning how to drive manual. <laughs> it's gonna be so embarrassing. It's so much fun. <laughs> so there's a slight chance that learning how to drive manual could cause some damage to the engine. To the clutch. So I don't want to replace that all just for me to learn and like potentially damage something. So it makes sense that I learn on the current engine and then we fix it. The clutch. Is the clutch yes. not part of the engine? Uh, not really. Basically for me to get the van in a good enough spot for you to teach me how to drive it. We need two things to happen. One. We gotta fix the starter. It's push button start, by the way. Oh, it's not. Yes, it is. It's push button, you gotta push a button to start it, not turn the key. I don't believe you. I swear on Danny boy. But currently, yes, this is how we have to start it. Insert, insert, insert clip ins of us. Insert clip of us. Oh, I see. Insert the clip. Which if you've ever seen Little Miss Sunshine is exactly how they're always starting the bus. It's so funny. I watched that that movie like years ago and I was like, one day I would love a van like that. That pushes to start? Well, you know, if that had to come with it, then it came with it. So we need to fix the starter so it actually starts. And then once it starts and runs, the second problem is we need it to stop in an appropriate manner. We need brakes. The brakes are worn out. Did the previous owners not do some of the brakes? They no? did the rear brakes. Mm -hmm. But the front brakes are most important because like when you stop, like all the weight goes to the front. Let's start by fixing the starter. Start with the starter and then move on to the brakes. Think that's manageable to get done in this video. Could be done. Don't doubt me already, man. <laughs> okay, let's go. Do you know what size hammer we need? No. <laughs> See, then we're already off to a good start. <laughs> Welcome back to the journey where my husband, Austin, our dog, Danny, and myself, Becky, take you on the journey as we fix up our 1970s camper van. Well, hi guys, so glad to see you all back here. Before we get to work on that starter, let me give you a quick tour. Okay, so we've moved the van into the garage that's attached to the, <laughs> the house, which was like Austin's home gym. Um, I think that you should give them a tour of the new garage. This is better set up. This is the van garage. The van garage. Okay. Uh, yeah, what are, what are we looking at? Okay. It's the bag, my home gym, and the punching bag. Uh-huh. There's a chin-up bar here too. Wow, so impressive. Do you think that this should is gonna get in our way? Yeah, it already does. Can we move it? <laughs> That's gonna be me, guaranteed. I don't know who's this. Well, I was gonna put a mirror up, but this was cheaper and it's basically the same thing, so. <laughs> okay, but you failed to mention the actual important parts of the garage, which oh, is the tools? the tools that we actually need to use. Look, there's Danny, his picture of Danny. Look at the little baby. This is my old toolbox. I and this it. is us, this is. I got a new one. I would've organized this toolbox if I had known me on camera. Van is here. And so we gotta fix the starter. It makes a clicking noise. You wanna show me? Guess what happens when I press the starter button. No starty starty. Is that just like a part you can replace? or what I do don't you... know, we have to take it apart and see what's broken. You know how to do that? I do not. Me neither. Let's get these hands dirty. It makes two of us. <laughs> so right now we are trying to disconnect the battery so that we can take the starter out because we don't want to get electrocuted. Okay. So. The closer one with the big wire thing on it? This? Yeah, that one. But don't touch the other one. So I have to take this nut off? Yeah, and then, it will, and then you pry it up. Okay. This is the first time I'm actually getting my hands dirty in this engine at all, so bear with me as I learn. There we go. I did it! Yay! It's so beautiful. Wow. So much room under here. Look at all the room. I know. I was saying, being a mechanic is not good if you're claustrophobic. So, so now that we're underneath the van, we're able to actually access and remove that old starter. What is this? Yo, this is- Don't strip it, bro. Oh my god, I'm gonna vomit. This is so, like, off-putting. You can do it, Becky. <laughs> Literally not moving. 
see how easy this is. Whatever. I, it's because I loosened it for you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> funny stuff. Funny stuff. We're still not even sure if this is the right. We're still not even sure. <gasps> can't help operate like eight things at once. What a camera. A camera, my sense of humor. With the nuts removed from underneath, we had one final nut to remove from inside the engine bay, and then the starter came right out. Grab it out of there. Does it come out this it's, way? It's heavy. How heavy? Like, can I hold it with one hand? Okay. Yay! Let's go. Ow. So. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> but we got the starter out. We did it! Yeah, half out. Oh, my hand. I'm using this website called Rock Auto. They seem to have Volkswagen parts. That looks like that. Yeah, that looks like it. Sure does. Add to cart. Okay, the new starter has been ordered and that should come in like two days, I think it said, which is crazy fast considering it's like an old car and an old part that I don't know how many people are buying. But I wanted to share with you something that I learned through this process that I genuinely think is cool. And because I didn't know this about, about the auto world. And that is the fact that they will take old parts like this and pull them apart, rebuild them, fix them up and resell them. And this is extremely common. So anytime you order a part, you pay for the part and then you also pay what's called the core charge. So for example, the new starter was 40 bucks and there was a $30 core charge associated with it, which means when we get the new starter, we're gonna take this old one, put it in the mail and send it back to them so that they can hopefully take this apart, fix it up and it gets reused again, which I know, you know, it's, it's there's arguments to be made about how sustainable vehicles are in a whole, but the fact that there's this one smaller common practice of taking back old parts no matter how old and trying to fix them and reuse them is pretty cool to me see you in two days hopefully it comes that fast it's like a thousand degrees today but just came to the office and it's an exciting day because look what came in the mail unboxing my starter that i ordered also the girls were like i don't know what a starter looks like show me so show me starter i was like why do i feel like it looks like a button <laughs> i also yeah this unit was remanufactured using 91 percent less energy consumption compared to an all new unit we love it okay come on guys how big did you think a starter was like the size of a finger the size of a fist or the size of a head because this is starting to look like a head and I thought it would have been a finger. Wow, wow, wow. This looks like ours, but significantly less rusty. And we love that. Okay. A that starter. little thing will start your car. This little thing here, when you turn your key, it turns something here and it creates a connection in the oh. middle, the metal touches. Conduction. Yeah. I and could build a car. Okay, that's all. I will take this back and uh, Austin and I will hopefully fit this back in the car. Did I bring you the right piece? We got the starter. Does it look correct? Well, you never know until we put it in and it works. It actually does look smaller than the old one, right? Size doesn't matter. Do, does it not? Uh. So basically the process should be exactly the same, right? Like the way it came out is the way it goes back on. Yeah, well, let's see. When you get the nice squishy floor mat. You know, it's kind of cozy. I cannot see nothing, but I know what you're doing because I was there when we took out the old one. <laughs> Look at that. See, we really need to tighten the nuts. What? Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the nut. Bringing you a nut, my lord. I very often have like a moment of truth moment when I'm building something or DIYing something where you like test if the thing you made is gonna stand. We're gonna have a moment of truth moment now with the van and the starter. <laughs> See if it starts. All right. Okay, don't do it yet. Hold on, hold on. Um, okay, are you ready? Starts way better than the old starter. So it works. Of course it works. What? What do you mean? 
do you mean? Of course it works. Wait, were you nervous that it wasn't going to work? Of course. You weren't? Well, 1% worried. <laughs> I cannot believe that it's pushed to start. Can I push it? Can I push to start it? Yeah, well, you gotta drive it then. No, no. I just wanna push the button. Yo, that's so satisfying. <laughs> that is a nice sounding starter. You did a great job today. Successful first big. Oh, it was easy. Project, it was What's up next? Easy. The brakes. The brakes? The brakes. The brakes work, but we need better brakes. All right, speaking of those brakes, I'm gonna now hand it over to Austin to show you exactly how he's going to replace them. Take it away, Austin. All right, folks. Just doing some brake work here. Got new brake lines here made up. See the old ones are all rusted out. So I got some fresh ones made up. There's a new caliper. This is what squeezes the rotor. Okay, here's the passenger side of the vehicle that I haven't done yet. So you can see these rotors, they're all worn. But the main reason why we're doing the brakes is that I think this caliper is not working because when you hit the brakes, it really pulls to the left. So this is the right side of the vehicle. All right, if you haven't noticed Becky's not in this video uh, that much, it's because I gave her the day off. She's at the beach right now, probably drinking a cerveza or something. Can't confirm, I am phoning in from the beach right now and the cervezas are cold. Okay, this video is not an exact how-to on how to change the brakes and all that. This video is just more for your entertainment. A Ukrainian guy once told me something very smart. He said, there are three things you can watch forever. Fire, water, and other people work. Now you're about to do the third thing. I hope there's not a fire, but we'll see. Stay tuned. Uh, it's not the right bolt. Well, we want to get the right bolt for this. This is important. Okay, I got these bolts here. They're the right thread, but they're too long. So I'm going to cut this new bolt that I got. Okay, now there's a bearing behind this cap here. So I'm just going to remove it. See if we can get some more grease into there. Now you can see there's grease in here, but looks like some nasty old grease. So we're going to clean that up. All right, I've banged off all the loose rust. Now it's time for a little bit of the uh, paint and the spray can here. Are you here to help? What are you doing? All right, you got the proper protection on now, Danny? Ready to do some real work? Boy, get back to work. Yeah, I got to grease the bearings and I put a new seal in because the old one was damaged. So we got lots of fresh grease in there. And so I got a new cap for the outside here. So just gonna pump a bunch of grease in there. Goes on. Let's get your little hammer. Now I'm gonna remove the brake line here. Hopefully it comes apart or else we're in a lot of trouble here. Oh, my business. He's all old and, and old. Got a new flex line. Okay, we got a fresh rotor here. Put it on. Gonna line up the holes. We got a proper hammer now. Okay, these are the bolts that we cut earlier. They should just go right in, no problems.
Okay, you got the uh, brake line all hooked up. Flex hose all hooked up. Caliper's looking good. Now we just gotta bleed the bleed the brake lines. So need a buddy's coming over. Chester chicken's coming over. So it's gonna give me a hand with that. So when you press the brake, it pushes brake fluid through this hose into this uh, other hose here, and it goes into the caliper here. And what it does is it squeezes together to squeeze the the brake pad so that it slows down the slows down the rotor here. All right, we got Chester Chicken here. Yeah, in the house, Chester Chicken. He's gonna press the brake while I come down here and do some wrenching. All right, we've bled the brakes, got the wheels back on. So I'm um, done for today. It's getting dark now, it's raining. So I've had enough, uh, done enough work today. So see you guys tomorrow. I'm back home from the beach and now it's time to check out Austin's work. We're testing the brakes. See if the brakes work. Oh, 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 we got oh brakes. we're breaking. Woo! Test the brakes again at high speed, 35 miles an hour. Whoa! <laughs> we got brakes and it doesn't pull. Well, and we got brakes. <laughs> The brakes must work, so must have done something right. So can I just say, really good job. I'm really? very proud of oh, you. Oh, 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 Becky's here. Oh, when did Becky get here? Wow. I came back just in time to see if yeah, the, uh, it worked. The wheel, put the wheels on, then Becky shows up. It's good timing. Good job. All right, see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Here's what you can expect on the next episode of That 70s Van. We are gonna go to the automotive flea market, which is a thing that happens twice a year. And it's basically like a giant flea market with all sorts of booths and vendors that are selling like parts and vintage stuff. I agree, that is cool. You don't got any Volkswagen logos, do you? We're on the hunt for one.